Hello, in today's video I'm testing out the Daniel Smith watercolor ground that I got for Christmas. I'm testing it out on various surfaces. It's supposed to be able to go on pretty much any surface and allow you to paint with watercolor and gouache. Here I am testing out the white version, which you can get in larger tubs, as I put it on this little masonite circle. I'm also putting it on what I call an oval flip. These are all things I got from the dollar store. I'm putting the translucent one on the surfaces as well, and the bottom side of a coaster. I'm hoping it's pretty translucent, although it turned out to be a little not completely see-through, but I needed to make sure I put enough on. One of the things with these is that you need to give it time to dry before actually using it. It's recommended for 72 hours. I waited even longer than that because I had many things to work on. This oval flip is also a Mother's Day present, so I needed to make sure it was done in time for Mother's Day. This side is translucent, and the reverse side of this oval flip has no treatment on it at all. I'm proving that you can use pure gouache on it, but on this side, I'm doing watercolor. I'm actually finding the translucent watercolor ground amazing, and I really love it. The watercolor bleeds slightly outside of the area, but it's easy to lift back off. I'm finding it works incredibly well as a surface, and I'm really enjoying the fact that it can get extremely soft, smooth gradient blends, and blend easily over time. As I said, I'm noticing that it's actually a fairly liftable surface, but not so liftable that by merely touching it, it's removed. I find it to be an enjoyable surface, and I'm really enjoying the translucent version, and I'm going to be buying more of the translucent one when this tub runs out. I'm doing a Thompson's Gazelle. This oval flip represents day and night, and this is the daytime side, as Thompson's Gazelles are diurnal animals. I'm going over it in layers. I'm only using watercolors. Some of these palettes include some gouache, but I'm using only the watercolors in this case. Some of the colors I use for this are custom mixes. I'm using different sized brushes in order to get some fine details and softer blends. I used a more blendable makeup brush for the main body color. I also have been waiting for areas to completely dry before going back in with the next layer. I'm carefully planning everything out so I don't mess up, making sure areas are fully dry before doing the next area. Overall, I found this surface very enjoyable. This is the untreated side. I needed to do some tests with it untreated to show how different media work. In this case, I'm using gouache. A little watered down, but mostly applied very thickly. The Himimiya gouache is what I used here. I took it fresh out of the palette and put it out with a palette knife here so I could use it in its best, thickest consistency from paint that had been still kept moist. As I go over it here, I'm mixing the colors I need. I took some colors off of already existing palettes with leftover paint, such as the blue tones that I needed to make the gray a little more blue, was just from extra paint on a palette. I'm making sure to keep it more on the thick side, as I said, because the style of painting I'm doing, that I know will work well on wood, requires using mostly very thick paint. I'm finding it works very well to paint with no watercolor ground at all, using gouache on wood, at least this type of wood, and I think it's a very good option for a surface you can paint on without requiring the watercolor ground. I do know, however, that regular watercolors won't be quite as good of a result. I looked up reference for this of a Japanese flying squirrel. They're nocturnal, so this is the nighttime side of the oval flip. I made sure to try to get it as close as possible to the reference because the reference I found to use was extremely adorable and I thought it would look really good. Originally, I was trying to figure out what mammals to put randomly from various lists in order to make a final decision. However, I had rolled meerkat on a random chart, but it just does not work well for the horizontal layout because the best cute pose for a meerkat is rearing up and that looks not very good on a wide oval like this. Sometimes you really need to adjust your subject matter or posing a lot to the shape of the thing you're painting on. 
So with a wide oval flip like this, you really should think about the layout of the shape you're painting in and not just paint whatever you want because you want to paint it. You need to make sure the composition of the layout matches the shape you're using. The shape of the canvas, that is. In this case, I'm now putting some extremely thick, completely not watered down white on top. Really fresh, bright white pl placed on there very thickly and I'm going in and doing the pupil. The last little bit needed to be done after things had dried so that there was less chance of transference. Some final darkening and some more details in the eyes. Just the darkest shadow adjustments here and the absolute brightest white highlights that I missed in the previous layers. As you can see, it takes quite a bit of refining, but overall I don't think it took me very long. Here's a final look at the squirrel and the Thompson's Izell. Now I'm testing that white watercolor brown surface and oh boy, it was not as good as the translucent. I don't know if it's my mistake because it doesn't work good on this particular surface. If I put it on too thickly or too bumpy, I'm going to be trying again, obviously, and I'm gonna try applying it in a thinner coat using a sponge tool in case that helps. As it is here, I used a brush and applied it quite thickly and Either the ground itself doesn't work very well, especially compared to the translucent, or I applied it incorrectly and that affected things. The surface is not that hard to paint on physically, but there's a huge drying shift. I'm finding all but my most vibrant colors dull significantly on this surface. And in order to get any kind of color I'm enjoying, I'm literally having to use my brightest neons and brightest mixes I created. I'll ask you to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you're really enjoying my content. Paint does have a drying shift, some more than others, and in particular watercolors do get a little paler and duller when you let them dry down. However, the drying shift varies based on the surface, based on the paper, and it was the most extreme of any paper or surface I have, basically, with the exception of a couple of my cheapest papers on this surface. I layered up extra times, way more than I normally have to do, to get things to brighten again. The water looks great here because it's wet, but it's going to dull significantly. I end up not putting a second layer on because I kind of wanted to remind myself that that seems to be how it works. In this case, I have to make sure areas are completely dry before bringing things back out. I'm using my Event Horizon paint here, which is my blackest black gouache mix. It's the only exception to the watercolor on the watercolor fish here. The fish in the upper left is actually gouache, but including some watered down gouache. The fish in the farthest right is actually primarily ink tents with a little bit of watercolor. Ink tents has never faded more on any surface I've used it on than on this white watercolor ground. Many of the watercolors don't tend to fade a lot on a lot of my other papers in comparison to how much they faded here. I ended up switching to neons to get less of a fade, but I'm probably going to have to do more tests in order to really determine how to properly use this. I don't want it to be a waste of money that I purchased this white watercolor ground, so I'm going to try to figure out how to make the best use of it. As for right now, I really like the translucent and do not enjoy the white watercolor ground. I'm just adding some final highlights. And here is the final fish. And now for an epic fail. I knew this would fail, but I needed to kind of prove it to show the difference between using watercolor ground and not. Using watercolor directly on the wood yields horrific results where it bleeds everywhere, flows out of where you want it to go, and creates strange lines along the wood grain. I'm probably going to correct this with gouache in the future, but not on camera. As you can see, it just doesn't work. Now I have the translucent watercolor ground on the reverse side of this coaster. I intend to flip it upside down and ensure the table underneath is thoroughly dry and use it as a beautiful new coaster. I'm probably going to paint my other coasters in because this worked rather well in my opinion, although because it's not 100% see-through, it still leaves a bit of a faded effect in some areas where the ground was applied thickly. 
the paint remains vibrant and nice and there's almost no drying shift between the wet color and the dry color. It almost looks exactly the same when it was wet and when it's dry on this surface, which is entirely different than the white watercolor ground, which dulls the colors extremely. And here it is flipped around. I put these three together side by side and off camera I sketched on the bird almost identically but not quite identical, which is a bee eater of some description. I'm not sure of the exact species at this time. It's from an old reference photo I made, I printed out a while back. I'm doing it on the untreated on the far left, the white watercolor ground in the middle and the translucent watercolor ground on the far right. In this case, I applied the white watercolor ground a little thinner and a little smoother than on the oval flip. And I did this on purpose so I could test how it works based on how thick and smooth it's applied. I'm doing the exact same thing on each one in a row. The same painting techniques and mix on each one. I am finding I need to darken the colors a little more on the white one in order to get, or rather at less. I need to have them a little darker to get better contrast on the brown ones. And I don't need to darken it as much on the white one. I almost messed up what I was saying there. And here's a final look at all three. Once again, that's all for this video. If you like my videos, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to all notifications so you will know when a new video comes up. I aim for new videos every Wednesday, but sometimes life happens and things are delayed. I hope that you enjoyed this video and will see you with another one very soon.